sein de la SMEX. Donc aujourd'hui, je suis ravi de vous accueillir tous à ce webinaire concernant l'utilisation de l'intelligence artificielle pour pénétrer le marché américain. Donc aujourd'hui, nous avons la chance d'entendre Lou Pesch, qui est le fondateur de Lumen Brands. Donc euh, avec son expérience et sa vision, euh, il nous guidera à travers bon, les opportunités et surtout les défis de l'intégration de l'IA dans la stratégie de la pénétration du marché américain. Euh, ben, je tiens également à souligner que le webinaire sera en anglais aujourd'hui. Par contre, j'ai partagé euh, sur le chat une version en français de la présentation, comme ça, ben, histoire de pouvoir suivre avec nous. Euh, par contre, nous avons l'assistance de HealthCAF et moi-même pour tout ce qui est traduction en cas de questions ou commentaires. Donc, juste nous laisser savoir, on pourra bon, stopper le, le, le webinaire et répondre à vos questions. Donc, euh, sans plus attendre, écoute, je vous laisse entre les mains de notre expert Roop euh, et, on va, et je vous remercie ben, de, de, de nous accorder cette petite heure aujourd'hui pour ce webinaire. Voilà. Roop, if you want to start, the floor is yours. Thanks, Lafran. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Rupesh Kapadia, the founder of Lumen Brands, and I'm hoping today what we can talk about is a bit sharing information about how the U.S. Um, market and the U.S. mainstream market work, talking a little bit about the challenges and hurdles of compliance um, in addition to regulation, regulation and uh, coordination Um, and just kind of a bigger picture of exactly why it's so challenging to break into the U.S. market and then some solutions that work for us as a company. Um, so why don't we go ahead and get started? I think first it makes sense maybe we can take a look at the picture of Morocco um, so exports to the U.S. And I imagine many of you have seen this before. So um, right now when we're looking at the 1.4 billion that's been exported to the U.S., Uh, what's interesting is that, um, you know, about 15% of that is in the grocery space. Uh, so the vast majority, right, is in other categories. And also the oils are part of cosmetics. So grocery and cosmetics are roughly only about 15% of the current export, uh, which means that there's a lot of room to grow when we take a look at the market today. So... Let's just stop at this slide for one moment. We can take a look and see that the U.S. grocery market is over $1 trillion, dollars, right? Which is a tremendous amount of money. So when we compare the roughly um, $30 million, right, that's being um, uh, exported compared to the trillion dollar opportunity, it's clear that there's a lot of room for growth. Um, in addition, the cosmetics industry is not on this slide but that's about another $700 billion market. Now, both the grocery and cosmetics market have similar breakdowns, which is really interesting, right? Because if we see the orange that dominates the slide, it's clear that the vast majority of the opportunity, well over 90%, falls into mainstream. And I want to point out the other part of that, which is the ethnic portion, which is only about 4% of the opportunity. Uh, so let's keep, pay attention to those that split, right? Which means 96% falls into non-ethnic distribution, while only 4% does. This is a common theme. Um, so let's talk about the challenges of getting into that mainstream, getting into that 94%. And yeah, it's less than one out of every 10,000 brands that make it. And there's three large reasons. Firstly, Uh, the comp the compliance standards are complicated, and I hear all the time, well, we've done ISO compliant, we have GMP. For the mainstream, that's just the bare minimum. There's a whole set of uh, compliance standards. It's like hundreds of pages of documents. And it's not just only on the brand itself, but it's also on their distributor. It's on their import of record. It's on their insurance partner. Uh, it's on the distribution chain. And so if all of these compliance standards aren't met, uh, mainstream retailers won't even look at the product. And so it's been our experience that uh, ethnic distributors, because they're specialized on ethnic stores, um, they don't choose to invest in the you know, quite expensive and costly infrastructure required for mainstream compliance. So what that means is when Moroccan brands are introduced to the U.S. market through ethnic 
that they're that they are limited to that four percent of the total market opportunity. Um, and so without any chance of crossover, I think often we hear back, well, we've been importing to the US for decades. How come we can't seem to get to this trillion dollar market? And that the compliance layers are often a big part of that picture, right? It's it's got nothing to do with the product and the brand's quality. And now that the FDA governs cosmetics. It's a similar situation. Um, secondly, the mainstream grocers don't want new products unless they have nationwide brand awareness. In the US, there's over 12 million brands for food. And so um, distributors and mainstream retailers don't want the work of creating awareness about the product. They're willing to do it for large fees. So Basically, if a, pro if a brand has a great product but doesn't have nationwide brand recognition, their options are to either create that brand recognition or to pay distributors like Kehi, Cisco, Del Monte, uh, tremendous fees, right? Just to be able to get exposure for their products. Uh, thirdly, uh, mainstream grocery shelf space is dominated by food conglomerates. In the U.S., there are uh, quite large food companies that own hundreds and thousands of brands, and they work with the mainstream grocer. What that means is for newer brands, for specialty brands uh, emerging into the market, there's a lot less room on the shelf space for them to get their products on. So, you know, it can be really challenging to get into the market, and um, this is something we work hard towards, and that's what we're built for. And uh, we've done it. Um, we've helped out many of clients. We are FDA fully registered and compliant our facility. And we're, um, you know, I'm going to talk about technology and e-commerce in just a moment because it's a great way of leveling the playing field. We're actually one of two companies that Amazon recommends for onboarding uh, non-domestic food brands in the U.S. So we have some experience working with corporate partnerships uh, to find success also. Just a little bit about us. In the last four years, we've shipped over a million orders on behalf of our clients. We work with over 30 brands, large and small. Um, we are pretty effective with our advertising, having created over 10 million in revenue. Uh, we've created over 30 million in revenue for our food brands directly, and somewhere close to 100 million indirectly from the halo effect. And on average, our brand see an increase of about seven times revenue working with us uh, here in the U.S. for the mainstream. Um, so we can talk a little bit about those challenges, and we'll revisit this more. But when it comes to the complicated mainstream compliance standards, we're, we're a company, and there, there are many out there who are built for um, specifically for mainstream compliance. It's a totally different animal. So we've built our entire logistics and supply chain and end-to-end -end to cater to reaching the mainstream. Um, so when it comes to working with a company like Whole Foods or Costco or 7-Eleven or Cisco, we're able to provide all of the documentation required for all of the paperwork in order to be able to interface with them. When we talk about the lack of nationwide brand presence, we specialize in creating brand presence nationwide through the use of e-commerce. Uh, we find e-commerce is a far more effective way to create visibility to, um, you know, tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of Americans, right? We find it's a fantastic way to create introduction to the product, to learn about the uh, target audience of the consumers in the U.S. who want the product in the mainstream. And we also use that to help build case studies so we can then go and approach the mainstream retailers. And thirdly, when it comes to the food monopolies, um, mainstream retailers are far more open to working with small brands who, once they've achieved mainstream compliance, uh, they also have nationwide brand recognition. So if we can go to um, we can go to a company like Whole Foods and say, "Hey, look, we have this beautiful product. Uh, it's made well, right? We have nationwide brand awareness. We can show you that mainstream customers love it." take a look at our performance on Amazon and you can see how well, how well loved and reviewed it is. Uh, and ad in addition, we've reached an audience of 50 million Americans. So people already know about it. Well, this is how we can change the conversation and actually get our foot in the door. And all this sounds fine and well, um, 
but it's important to know that we've had some results. So we work with companies, many, many of them, right? From the Middle East, the Mediterranean, um, some names you probably recognize, uh, food brands as large as Nido, um, Ziad's one of our preferred partners. Um, and we'll talk about some of these other ones, but we also work with companies as small as startups. Um, okay, so I wanted to transition though to talk about uh, a, a Moroccan company that's done tremendously well through following this model. We don't work with Atlas Olive Oil, I wanna be clear, but um, we really admire the work they've done and their path to success mirrors very much um, how we approach reaching the mainstream. So just from a couple of different bottles, you can see that they're shipping just on Amazon alone, outside of mainstream distribution and retail, they're shipping over 35,000 bottles a month, um, you know, exceeding a million dollars in revenue. This is online only, right? All of the mainstream is an addition. And this is done through a three-step process, right? Is paid influencers for social media, online brand leadership. Um, in this case, they decided to pay the large distributor placement fee to Kehi, which is over $50,000 US a year. And then they've supported their brand by creating strong videos and social media content uh, with uh, brand leadership online. So through this uh, basically three-phase process, uh, Atlas has not only built um, market share, but gained leadership, right? Now they're one of the larger companies online for olive oil in the space. And this is just in a, a you know, a, maybe three short years. And so basically um, they go through Kehi and I mentioned them before, but Kehi is a mainstream distributor. So in order to talk about mainstream compliance, there's a whole article about it. We'll share the presentation. You can check it on your own. But it's really important to note that that the minimum fees for a mainstream distributor start at fifty thousand dollars a year with no performance guarantees. That's in part because of how expensive the insurance is, in part because of how complicated and expensive the compliance is. Um, so all that can all that to say is it can be cost prohibitive um, for a smaller company to to take a shot and work with that, right? And this fifty thousand dollars a year is just for the distributor compliance. That excludes all of the social media, that excludes the brand leadership. So that can be disheartening. Um, but we found there's other ways to go about it. There's also some uh, successful companies, right, for Moroccan sourced ingredients and Moroccan products that are in the uh, wellness, self care, cosmetic space. We can see three examples of companies doing well that are following a similar path, right, to leveraging online success. Uh, in order to gain traction into the mainstream. And of course, they're supporting their online success with their own social media support and their own online brand leadership. Um, so let's talk about one of those brands that we do work with. Uh, we can talk about Mazette Hummus. This is a Jordanian hummus company. And uh, so we started working with Mazette in 2022. And we did get them to be, we launched online only. And we did uh, get them to be a top 10 hummus, winning many awards. Um, we did a joint pitch with Whole Foods. Um, and so now that Mazette is going to launch in 500 locations in June 2024, um, which is amazing. And so the way we got there is by creating nationwide online success, by creating tens of thousands of customers online, by then creating a case study of over 50 million U.S. consumers using our technology to show them their target demographic, right? And then presenting all of this information uh, to the Whole Foods review team. And we can talk about a different situation, which is more of an ethnic brand, which is Alamid Coffee. Um, Alamid Coffee, when we started working with them, uh, they had less than 600 accounts nationwide with almost no online brand presence. So we leverage our own AI technology, which is our platform, uh, to find target audience, to advertise, to remarket, to collect consumer data. Within six months, we had created visibility to over 20 million Americans. Um, now it's the best-selling Arabic coffee online. And uh, we're, we're, we're regularly viewed by over 50 million Americans. And now Alamid, uh, again, in four years, has increased from 600 stores to over 3,000 locations uh, being distributed in partnership with Ziad in the U.S.
And so we're a company that uses e-commerce to level this playing field, right? To change this model to disrupt from paying large fees. Um, Amazon is an incredible tool when used properly. Sure, it's really competitive, it's really challenging landscape, but it gets over 2 billion visits daily. And more importantly for US shoppers, one out of every three shoppers are using Amazon while they're shopping in the grocery store. So when they come to new products, the first place they check is to see how the brand's reputation is on Amazon. And while Amazon might only be 3% of the grocery market, it's still a $30 billion market opportunity. I wanna be clear, this is about the same size as the entire ethnic market in the US. So when we talk about ethnic distribution, uh, Amazon is not only the same size, but it's an excellent way to learn about the mainstream consumer for a brand. And uh, buyers at mainstream distributors and retail love looking at Amazon because it has the same crossover as all of their customers. The people buying in Walmarts, the people buying in Whole Foods, the people buying in Costco, the people buying in Kroger, uh, they're the same people shopping on Amazon. And uh, more importantly is that um, buyers know that if a product exceeds on Amazon, it's going to be a great product because of just how competitive it is, right? In Amazon grocery alone, there's over 13 million new products with all of these brands spending over $10 billion in advertising to gain customers. So it's an incredibly competitive landscape. Um, and we're lucky we have a leg up. Uh, we're actually, like I mentioned, we're a company that's a preferred Amazon partner. So we interface directly with over 15 departments and we can leverage tools and resources that most companies don't even know exist in order to help not only set up the brand, but create long-term success and visibility. Um, in addition, we've built out our own AI platform, uh, Prism, and we, we find that that's an excellent tool to gain target uh, consumer data and also to advertise so that uh, your products and your brand can be uh, reached to customers who would never otherwise even know it exists. So this is a Prism. It's an AI platform. Um, it collects market data. It learns in real time. We use it to continuously change uh, bids, targeting prices. It learns on its own. It applies on its own. So this way we can focus on building your brand in a variety of other ways. Um, leveraging software like this or a platform like this more accurately uh, allows for millions of changes to marketing weekly so that it frees up opportunities for the brand to focus on uh, creating better content, right? To taking all of this information, it gets back to create videos that are catered to its audience. So we can create uh, and build a cycle of working together, improving, learning information and repeating these results. It also allows us to find new product opportunities. Perhaps the packaging isn't the optimal size for US consumers. Maybe we can bundle some products. Maybe we want to sell it in a multi-pack. Perhaps rebranding and color schemes um, will yield growth and results. There's maybe related product opportunities to expand the brand line. Uh, and we use data from our platform to guide all of these uh, choices and inform. Um, we can talk a bit about how we work as a partnership. Um, if you're interested, um, and by the way, I'm here as a resource. If you have any questions about how the market works or anything at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, what we do is we charge a one-time fee and we also match this fee. So basically we're starting as a partnership that's 50-50. What happens next is we become your buyer, your importer of record, your master distributor, your compliance partner, your advertiser, your 3PL, and your customer service department. We basically become your entire end-to-end -end solution for reaching the US mainstream. We go through a long, detailed, exhaustive onboarding process so we can become your brand experts. And so we can prepare all of the, the endless pages of documentation that are required um, to succeed in the mainstream in the US. And then we build out your products um, online. And then the way our agreement works is it renews annually if we meet commitments. And we don't charge any ongoing fees. 100% of the money we make as a company uh, comes from the uh, profit we make from selling products, uh, just like you. So our interests are 100% aligned.
Um, this goes over that. We can kind of skip this. We mentioned on the last slide. It's just when we talk about a comprehensive solution, we really mean it. And then there's a plan of action, right? We can talk about the onboarding, getting all the documentation required together, then creating your catalog content, building out your brand and products, your advertising machine, integrating into Prism, right? Getting logistics 3PL ready, placing purchase orders over the next six months. Um, so that means we're starting to buy your products, right? Uh, getting recommendations and data, starting to find your mainstream target audience. And then years one and ongoing is when we can actually really start collecting all of this data and information and getting ready to go approach the mainstream. What we're effectively uh, wanting to do as your partner and what we do is we build your infrastructure in the US. And you know it's a taken, I don't know how many years or decades for you to find success with your brand. Um, and so for us, we're trying to do it, but we can't do it overnight. It still takes us some time. What we're trying to do is provide that infrastructure in a matter of uh, just a couple short years, as opposed to in many cases, a decade it's taken to build uh, to build your company. And uh, it's an ongoing partnership and an ongoing process, right? We want to continue to provide you with feedback. We want to learn about what's giving you trouble. We want to work together uh, to help you find growth opportunities, and we want to help you reach the mainstream. Um, we pay for the advertising ongoing, right? We achieve mainstream compliance. We're here to help with new product development. And we have a competitive advantage in our corporate partnerships when it comes to launching your brands. Um, we have other models for managed e-commerce, some, some Fortune 500 companies like Lipton, um, Nestle. They prefer to work with us solely in a managed e-commerce standpoint. So if you're not looking for a full service partnership and you want to take advantage of Prism and our AI, uh, we can absolutely do that. Um, this is just a bit about me and our team. Um, and, uh, you know, we're also here to help. We donate over 10,000 meals a year. This year would be probably closer to 20,000 meals. Um, we're happy to provide any information that you may like. Um, feel free to reach out. Uh, we're here to be a resource. And um, thanks so much for your time. Thank I'll... you. <laughs> Go ahead, Hale, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, no, I just wanted to open the floor for questions, but I have some questions uh, to begin with. But if anybody has questions before I start, that would be great. Sure. Est-ce qu'il y a des questions? Je parle aux participants. I guess not for now. Alors, uh, je voulais savoir seulement par parmi lesquels d'entre eux maintenant uh, exportent act actuellement vers le marché principal ou uh, l'ethnique aux États-Unis. Maintenant, est-ce qu'il y a quelqu'un qui a déjà exporté pour uh, les États-Unis? You can write it in the chat or you can talk. It's up to you. <laughs> they have the um, authorization to talk, I think. Yeah. Well, I guess not. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to know better if anybody, what are the current challenges they are facing in actually being in the U.S. mainstream market? In order for Rup, if anybody has questions on that, to better lay out the market and see really what is the route to penetrate it in a way. That's why I was asking the question. If anybody is not shy enough <laughs> to answer, you can either write it in the comments or you can just raise your hand and it would be great to discuss it. Or if they want to discuss it, maybe on a one-to-one -one basis, maybe, uh, well, when I'll be sending all the inf all of Roop's information, then we can uh, take it on a one-to-one -one basis with each company if they don't want to share maybe information. Absolutely, um, as well. And yeah, and sorry, and I just got a, um, a message from one of the participants. For some reason, they're not able to talk or to write in the chat. 
Oh, okay. So that explains a lot. <laughs> oui, oui, je t'entends. Je t'entends. Nabil, tu m'entends? Si Nabil. Oui, oui. Oui, euh, alors les, euh, euh, les participants n'arrivent pas à parler, ni ils n'ont pas la main pour parler ni écrire dans le chat. Donc, il faut juste euh, demander l'accès, c'est-à-dire lever la main s'ils si, veulent euh, prendre la euh, parole, soit ils utilisent l'option de chat, c'est-à-dire de poser des questions et, et après on vous répond. La main, attendez, attends, je vais voir si ça marche. Galec, non, le chat ne marche pas. Pour la raison, il y a un problème de chat. Je ne sais pas s'il y a quelque chose que vous pouvez faire de votre côté pour l'activer. Yeah, so Rizan said you raised her hand. Normalement, ça marche. Maintenant, ça marche, oui. Rizan, tu arrives à parler ou pas encore? Okay, we have a question already. Could you talk more about who your ideal company might be in terms of their current revenue or the size of their product catalog? I would like to know who's too small, who might be too large. Um, yeah, that's an excellent question. So ideally, I want to be clear right now, due to the cost of shipping and logistics and distribution, we are working with products that are uh, ambient only. So if a product is refrigerated or frozen in this moment, uh, we can, we're happy to provide information, but that's not um, a product we can or a brand we can work directly with. So if the products are shelf stable and ambient, we require ideally an 18 month shelf life. And the reason for this is because companies like Cisco, uh, Whole Foods, Amazon, they require themselves uh, 18 months because they will not sell a product that does not have at least five or six months of a shelf life. Uh, in terms of glass, um, packaging, we're really flexible. We have a variety of packaging solutions for in, uh, ensuring safe transit. And in terms of price points or size of company, as long as the company is willing to provide support, we're willing to work with them. So we have worked with a couple startups um, and we work with companies at, as large as Nestle, right? Or Lipton. So it's more of a matter of um, finding the willingness to work together than really the company size. Um, we're well funded, so purchasing is um, is not an issue for us. But Rup, it's important to also mention regarding the small scale companies, the willingness to adapt also to the regulation of the US in terms of FDA regulation, because there will be a lot of regulation in terms of labor regulation, technical regulation, that the company is ready to do the necessary adjustment to the to the infrastructure or to the labor to be able to support, right? Yes, certainly. And we do offer, you know, part of part yes. of our partnership is that we offer compliance and onboarding. So if you have questions about your brand or your products, we're not here to provide the consulting. But if you're not sure if you're ready or not, come talk to us and we'll take a look and we'll be happy to provide you with information. Uh, if you're not ready, at least we can hopefully provide you towards where you can go to next steps. Absolutely. Je crois que Rizlan a une question. Uh, no, it, was, it wasn't a question. It's just when you were asking whether one of the participants anyway. already has operation in the US, I was about to answer, but uh, it's just that. And then it was it was blocked. And the chat is still blocked. It's written, discussion désactivé, which is... Okay. Well, Rizan, you already uh, export to the US mainstream or to the ethnic to ethnic distributors? None of them. Specialized, None of them. Uh, specialized retail store in oh, cheese, she's... wine, and oil. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, great. And I don't have uh, lots of questions because I already asked maybe 2,000 questions to uh, Rupesh <laughs> <laughs> in separate I, discussions. I didn't, want to show, I didn't want to show that I know you already asked a lot of questions. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Everybody. But thank you for sharing it. No, yeah, I just wanted to participate because you were asking questions to the participants and none was talking, but then I understood that it was nobody okay. could talk at that point, yes. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Nice talking to you again. <laughs> Thanks.
Merci, Rizlan. Avec plaisir. So, I guess if the chat is still not active, I think it would be better if anybody wants to ask a question or they can reach out directly to us, to Roop and Osman. But we have, I think, one question that is written in the QA. So, if a Moroccan brand would like to export to US market, it can be through Lumen Brands and would still the Moroccan product keep its brand name? Roop, that's for you. Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. We're not here to take over the brand or change the brand name. Um, we're not seeking another white label service or partnership. What we want to do is grow your brand. And um, we want to do that together. Um, I think there's a lot of value in creating long-term brand leadership so that the brand can be self-sustaining. Thank you. I think these are all the Q&A that I have in the box here. Due to what? I'm sorry. Well, maybe I can address one more point, which yeah. is that, Go ahead. Which is that um, when we seek to be your uh, partner into the mainstream US, we're not seeking to replace ethnic distribution. What we're seeking to be is the partner that will help you get into the mainstream, but then also help you service all of the specialty and ethnic distribution in the US. You're not choosing between us and ethnic or specialty, you're choosing to work with us so that we can help you not only service ethnic and specialty, but also reach the mainstream. Um, because we're, we're the initial point of entry for the brand into the US and from there, we can help spread the products where they need to go. Okay, I think. Okay. Hill, do you have something else to add or? No, I'm good. Uh, I think if anybody has additional questions that they couldn't ask uh, during the session, it would be uh, a pleasure for us to answer any questions later on. So I will leave it up to you, Osman, to coordinate. Yeah, so, so uh, <laughs> alors, moi, ce que je vais faire tout de suite, c'est que je vais partager les informations de Rupesh et Hill, donc notamment leur, uh, bon, leur, leur email. Uh, et si il y a plus de questions, vous aimeriez avoir une réunion uh, uh, privé pour un peu discuter bah, de, de vos produits et des exports vers les États-Unis et comment on peut tous travailler ensemble pour vous aider à pénétrer le marché américain. Vous pouvez toujours uh, envoyer un email et prendre rendez-vous pour uh, une petite session de travail histoire de répondre à vos questions et d'aller de l'avant. Voilà. Donc, uh, j'aimerais aussi remercier uh, tous les participants uh, d'être venus aujourd'hui et uh, j'aimerais, uh, enfin, en espérant que uh, on pourra tous travailler ensemble. Great. Merci Thank beaucoup. you so much. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci à tous. Thank you. Merci, Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.